Hi, can I speak to John Paulson? Yeah, that's me. Hi, John. This is Antonio Sayant. How are you? I'm from the Examiner. Hi, how's it going? Okay, I'm supposed to call you at four. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm good. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay, how are you? Good, good. Yeah, yeah. I'm expecting a call. All good. Yeah, it's a pretty sad uh, time right now in New York because uh, I don't, I'm pretty sure you know that James Gandolfini just passed away yesterday and. Yeah, yeah, he he was a, yeah he was actually a good friend of mine and stuff. And oh really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. I heard from you know I got the phone call from Gianna Pomentari, who's Chaz's wife. Really? Yeah, and uh, I I didn't you know because I'm not near a TV or nothing like that you know at the time. So I guess I was like the last person to hear. I heard it from a phone call and kind of really upsetting because you know I mean it is what it is, but. You know, you should know this. You're in the, you're in the business. Um, anyway, um, I'm pretty excited by this uh, film festival of yours because, uh, you know, it's it's coming to Brooklyn, and uh, I really didn't know much about your film festival until I started reading it. I know that you did it in Bryant Park last year, but what I want to know is how did you go, twenty one years ago from a cafe in Australia uh -huh. to what it is now. That's what I want to know. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, listen, that's a big question. I mean, I'll try not to take 21 years answering it because it was pretty much blow by blow. But the reality is, you know, I mean, you probably know the basic premise is I, I made a short film. I couldn't afford a cinema to show it to my cast and crew of maybe 10, 15 people. And so I, I asked the local cafe if I could just show it there, called the Tropicana Cafe. Right. And where well, a lot of filmmakers hung out and a lot of my friends hung out. And, and he said, fine, the owner said, fine. So he screened it down, 200 people showed up. You know, the people told their friends and wanted it. So it was very impromptu. There was nothing, you know, there was nothing really designed about it at all. It was really, I, and then I got up on a chair at the end of it and said, hey, let's have a film festival. Come back here in three months. And everybody should make a film. And, and to my great surprise, so then I said about getting like four television screens to put together with tables. And, right. and and so three months later, about nine people had made films for it and, and about a thousand people showed up. So it literally just happened from there. It was very organic. I mean, I'm a filmmaker by trade, if you like. I'm not, a, I'm not an event guy or a, or a marketing guy or anything. It was, it was all very much about, really about making these films and getting them seen by an audience, especially short films. At that time, and even to this day, you know, short films, I think, are a completely underrated medium. Um, I mean, people are starting to get it now, obviously, with the internet and mobile and stuff, but there's a whole world of incredible film out there that isn't about an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. It's, it's like three minutes that'll bring kids to your eyes and stuff like that. Right. So, so I just, you know, it's... it's, it's, it's Meanwhile, I was trying to keep my own career going and, and, and slowly started to build a little sponsorship base and put a staff together. And, and so it went like that for maybe 15 years in Australia. And eventually it was 150,000 people on one night and a live television broadcast national across wow. Australia. So it was like the, Australia's best kept secret, you know. And then we started to get calls from other countries who were interested in doing their own trop fest for their own young film communities. And the first one we did was the Middle East. We do Tropic Arabia now in its fourth year. Um, we do New Zealand, we did Southeast Asia. And uh, as you know, this is our second year in New York. We did Bryant Park last year. We had a capacity crowd of about 10,000 people. And so we decided, you know, we needed a bigger venue. And uh, Prospect Park, here we come. Wow. Well, let me ask you this question. Why Brooklyn? <laughs> well, there's two answers to that. <laughs> Manhattan, frankly, and we've just, you know, become 
the past few years, a really interesting place to keep an eye on. I think arguably one of the centres of global, you know, creative energy and creative activity in the, in the world. I mean, I don't think that's a big secret. I mean, there's, there's, there's so many people here now who are making films and, you know, yeah. artists and musicians. And, and so it was kind of a no-brainer. And obviously the venue was a big part of it. And then at the very personal level, I mean, I lived here. So yeah. people have been joking that it made my commute a lot easier, which is, which is true, but obviously that's not the only one. Well, I admire it. You know what? I admire people like you because uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I interviewed Kevin Spacey last year for Trigger Street Productions on his, what he does for Jameson First Shot to help filmmakers. Right, and, right. and he has a mentor that he said to me, which was uh, Jack Lemon. And Jack Lemon taught him, uh, told him one day, Kevin, if you ever make it to the top, send the elevator back down. So what is, is this something that 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 happened to you when you did your short film and then all of a sudden now that you, you're a, you know, you're a famous director and you're well known is this something you want to like give back to filmmakers to try to help them is this your way of trying to like Kevin's doing like he's giving back is, is probably, that probably probably I had my Jack Lemmon I had a guy called Dr. George Miller he's a very well known Australian director he made you know everything from Road Warrior which we call Mad Max you know, through um, all sorts of amazing films, including Happy Feet and Babe and, and other movies. I mean, he, and he was my kind of hero, still is. Um, I still meet with him once, a couple times a year and have lunch. And, and so he definitely, I feel like Tropfest is my way of doing in some ways for a lot of young filmmakers that he did for me. And that just give a bit of encouragement. George has been one of our founding patrons of Tropfest. He was one of the first guys to say to me, Literally in year one, when we were all sitting on the sidewalk outside the cafe, I was saying, this is a great idea, you should stick with it. This is incredible for the Australian film industry. So, of course, it's, it's largely about giving back. The reason we have great people coming and judging every year, we've had everybody from, you know, Steve Jackman and Russell Crowe and Nicole Tim and Jeffrey Rush, all the Australian greats. And now others, Liam Strive is our host, obviously, on Saturday night. Bishop Stevens is going to be there, Malcolm Gladwell is going to be there judging. I think it's no big secret that one of the reasons that these people, maybe the main reason these people are involved in Tropfest once they understand what it is, is it's an incredible way, and, 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 you know, to give back to these young people who are starting out, who we all recognise ourselves in from 20 years ago or 30 years ago, whatever the case may be. So um, it's all about young filmmakers, and, and, and I keep going. I mean, I've just had my career. Um, I try to keep my eye on the ball with that, which sometimes it's yeah. the way it's going. It's really well, that, that, that's my next question. How do you find time to juggle your career and at the same time take the time to help others and continue with this type of festival uh, and, and make it what it is today, very successful? Well, I mean, the honest answer is a great team. I mean, I have a lot of my focus every day is on my television and film career, directing and producing. Um, but if I guess you could say my moonlighting gig is top first. Um, obviously, when I'm not working, I'm in the top first office full time. And, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, the truth is I do two jobs full time. I work I put pretty long hours, but I love it. Um, I don't really ever consider top first work. Um, and, I, and I try to put a great team. I mean, we've got five, six, seven top fifths around the world now. Every one of them has got a really rock solid team. So the best in New York, I've been prepping elementary, which is the show I'm producing here, um, you know, we're shooting the first episode in London, starting uh, actually in about a week and a half, or two weeks, and so I've had my eyes very firmly focused on that, but I've got a great team, and obviously I've been answering the right emails and phone calls when they come in, um, but also a group of people who know the festival very well and know what I want, and when they don't, they ask me, and, and I mean, if we, you know, we struggle through it, and, and hopefully both. Um, strides in my life um, uh, the better for it. I mean, I do feel when I watch these films, it's, in, it's great for my filmmaking just to see these young sure. people with fresh ideas who don't even know the rules and therefore I have no fear about breaking them. I mean, it's very exciting to see what these people do with sometimes 50 or $100 on a mobile phone. Sure. Let me ask you a question. You directed Hide and Seek, Seek with uh, Rob De Niro. Did you pick his right. brain because of the Tribeca Film Festival? Or, oh, yeah, or, yeah. 
or did he pick your brain? <laughs> you know, because <laughs> because you know you started first twenty one years ago, basically. But uh, well, what happened with that was we we made this we were, we were making this movie, and for a couple of reasons we ended up pushing out dates. I didn't mention topics. I tend to keep the two separate. Right. You know, we're, we're plus. I hadn't mentioned topics at this point, but one day I came to him and I said, "Listen, you know, because we moved our dates." I can't actually, for the first time in history, I can't show up to this film festival I created, you know, 20, well, at that time, I guess, 15, 16, 17 years ago, whatever it was. Right. And I said, it would mean a lot to me if you would do a video with me, just stand next to me and say, hey, we're sorry, John can't be there. So he very kindly agreed to do that. And of course, then he's like, well, what is this film festival? And we did start talking about it. And actually, for a year or two, we did a little programming with Tribeca. Um, we had, you know, we played some proper short films as part of the Tribeca Film Festival, so it kind sort of started the beginning of something there, and I guess you could say it's a bit of a soft launch at Trump Fest, New York, you know, and then obviously a few years later, we picked it up last year by a talk and did it as a standalone event. Yeah, well, I have a mentor, and you probably know him or know of him, because he did an Australian film in 1971 called Wake and Fright. And it, oh, yeah. it, 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 it is now an Australian classic. It is one of the two films that ran in the Cannes Film Festival twice. His name is Ted Kotcheff. And Ted has been my mentor for years. I followed him on Special Victims Unit for four seasons. You know? Yeah. As, and uh, the funny thing that you say is he was the founder, uh, one of the co-founders of the Hollywood Film Festival. And right. yeah, and so I, I've been meeting all these people that are involved in that. And you know what? I, I am so grateful that you guys do this for filmmakers because, it, you know, there's not, a, there's not a whole lot of people like you, I'll be honest with you. And, uh, oh, that's very kind of you. Thank and, you. And, I, and you know what? I wish there were more. You know, Sidney Pollack was another mentor of mine, and uh, unfortunately, he, he, he passed away. You know, and he was a great help in, in my career, and, and Ted and continues with the help in my career. And people like you and Kevin, you know, are just absolutely fantastic. You know, and I... Well, that's really wonderful of you to say. You know, and... Yeah. Uh, well, you, you know, think about it. I mean, um, what I want to know is, has anyone or any people, have you helped uh, any filmmakers? Have any, you know, when they won the competition uh does it oh, yeah. has it gone anywhere um do you know any oh, yeah. let me let me give you a couple of examples sure i mean you know there's frankly there's a laundry list. someone did a story last year and discovered that half of the winners of top list australia had gone on to make feature films so i think that's a pretty stunning wow uh, recommendation right there but if you want if you want to talk about that specifically i mean just talk about actors and actresses for a second there's a couple of people that, I mean, obviously some are more well-known than others, but the next by the name of Sam Wellington, who started Avatar, obviously the biggest, you know. Sure, wow. Up. Absolutely. Sam won Best Actor at Tropics before really anybody knew who he was, certainly outside of Australia. And, you know, we, we try not to claim Sam, and he's a, he's a talented guy before Tropics and after, but, but I think he would argue, in fact, he came back last year with the president of our jury, um, so again, a sort of full circle kind of way of giving back to Top Fest now. Um, he came back and spoke at Rough Cup, which is our filmmaker seminar, he's a keynote speaker. But so he's one example, you know, of, of many. Rebel Wilson, who most people know now, she hosted the MTV Awards recently. She's obviously started yes. in Bridesmaids and other. She, she won Best Actress at Top Fest before anybody knew who she was. Um, the TV show called Wilfred on FX, that started live. As a top best short film, so it's five hundred dollars wow. for one best comedy. Wow, two thousand and two. Not many people know this in America. They all know it in Australia, and it went on to become an Australian television series. And of course, the rest of history went on to become a hit series on FX, starring Elijah Wood, who incidentally was a judge at Top Best Australia, I think, uh, two thousand and nine or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, but there's there's endless examples of. Um, directors, writers, producers, actors, others, costume designers, you know, who've used it, and, and this is what we invite them to do, use it as a springboard. Because like, the reality is, Antonio, like, on Saturday night, I just came from the venue, so I'm sort of hyped up about it. But a great weather forecast. We, we're just putting up our screen. 
you get a chance, go to our Facebook page, you'll see our photo. I mean, it's massive, this thing. Sure, sure, I <laughs> see. 20,000 people there. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's that's just totally amazing how, you know. And most filmmakers will tell you, most short filmmakers, they couldn't in their wildest dream think of an audience of 20,000 people or more. In the case of Australia, 100,000 or whatever it is, watching their films live on television and all that. So, you know, we, we encourage people to use it as a springboard to get, you know, it's great to be in Tropfest, it's great to win Tropfest, but for God's sake, have a feature film script in your back pocket so... You know, that night, so when you're getting all this, like, you know, applause, you've, you, you've got something to, to show for it. You know, you turn around and say, here's my, here's my feature. And that happens every single year without fail. Some of the best people come through this event, I think. And, and I think most people, if you ask any Australian especially, it's changed, the, it's changed the geography of the Australian film industry, this event. You know, and I say that with some humility, I think. I, I, that's just a fact. I mean, it's really changed the way people think about how to find talent in the sale. And, it, right. and, and I think it's partially responsible for some of the best talent that's working in Australia right now. Wow. I guess uh, you, you, you're you spreading a message and a lot of people are attracted to that because did you ever, did you think that it was going to blow up this big uh, uh, when you first Never. started? Be- now, you not know, only did I not think that, every year I can't believe it's blown up this <laughs> big. Right. You know, I never, if you <laughs> asked me three years ago, well, we're going to be in Prospect Park with this many people and this screen, I'd say you're out of your mind. Yeah. So every wow. year I'm sort of stunned by it, but certainly in the early days, I had no idea of the sort of momentum and, you know, shutting down the street and, and, and all this good stuff that happened in the early days. It was the first time no traffic had been on that main street where the cafe was is since cars were invented. I mean, literally, like, talk about the people voting with their feet. We literally shut traffic for the first time since automobiles come to Australia. And wow. it, was a, it was a great feeling. So, yeah, I, I had no clue that any of this stuff would happen. You should be, a, you should be you know, very proud of yourself, really. Thank you. You know, yeah, I really I, and I hope, I hope to God that, I, I don't know if you've gotten awards for this. Have you... Have you received any awards for doing you know, I, this? I have, I have a, a couple, yeah. I, once or twice in Australia I've had like, mm-hmm. a, you know, something earlier this year and a couple other times, but which is always very nice. But listen, I'll be honest with you too, I do it partly because I love it, you know? Yeah. I, I'm glad it does so much for filmmakers, but, mm. but I also do it because it's just, it brings me a lot of joy right. to see, you know, to see the filmmakers, but also to see the crowd. I mean, I guarantee that half the people who come along on Saturday night never really sat down and focused on a short film. They've probably watched ads, they've watched music videos, they've obviously watched feature films and television. But to really sit there and watch 16 in a row, all less than seven minutes, these like mini masterpieces, and go, wow, these people can really tell a story and right. make me laugh or cry, whatever it is. And that, so that makes me feel great, you know, because I feel like there's... There's a, there's a real value in, in storytelling, in period, but also in this very, the very specific art to these short stories, and I think they're a lot of fun. And what I say to people is the great thing about 16 short films is, you know, if you don't like one, there's another one in seven minutes anyway, and, and you've got to come away with, from the night loving three, four, five, maybe more of these films. Right. Is, that, is that why you do it, is the limit is seven minutes? Is that why you do it? Because you, you figure that, Someone who's very talented enough can tell a story within that that seven minute period. Is, is that yeah, right? It's, yeah, that's exactly right. It's just sort of developed over the years. We've mm-hmm. had seven minutes for as long as I can remember, almost probably year two, or year three. And the reason for it is, you know, obviously there's always been pressure to make it longer. There's been pressure to make it more nights, and I've always said no. It's, it's an event more than a festival. It's got to be one night. You're either there or you're not. Right. In terms of the limit, I think, you know, seven minutes sounds short, but it's 14 television commercials yes. in a row. And if you've ever sat down and watched that, I mean, it puts you to sleep. So yeah. <laughs> it really takes the real... And it also, it's also levels of playing field. Someone who's got 50 or $100 or $1,000 can, can, especially with today's technology with mobiles and computers, can pull together a pretty great five-minute film or three-minute or seven-minute film. And we get a lot of films that are entered that cost tens of thousands of dollars too. And we don't care about either way. We just care about the best story and the best storytelling. Wow. Here's the uh, last question. 
because I don't want to take too much of your time because I know you're busy. But what what is your future outlook for the festival? What's the future? Well, that's a great question. I mean, I want to consolidate what we've done already. I right. basically want to end up with about eight full-on global events. Wow. I'd love to live stream them all so that if you're in New York, yeah, you come along and you watch Drop Test New York. But six weeks later, you're watching Drop Test Arabia, Drop Test Australia live stream. Um, so they're connected. Um, you know, I basically want to build in these other territories what, what we've built in Australia pretty successfully, which is like, a, you know, a massive platform for young filmmakers. I have an idea about building a, almost like a studio mm -hmm. for some of the best top filmmakers to come together and be supported and, you know, be given a, a space and the, and, a, and the resources they need to tell great stories year-round, so it's not just about a festival. Um, you know, I mean, the sky's the limit with this thing, and I'm sort of making it up as I go along, but that's some of the... That's some of the things that I've been, you know, I've kind of been thinking about for, for some time now. I believe everyone has a destiny, and I think your destiny is what you're doing right now. Absolutely. And you're a brilliant, you. you're a brilliant filmmaker, and I love all your films, and definitely uh, what you're doing now in television. And uh, Thank you. I, I congratulate you and your success and all your accomplishments, and I, I, you know, accomplishments, and I hope... Uh, I hope that it becomes even more successful than it is now because, you know, a lot of people come up to me all the time and they ask me, you know, they don't know how to get their work, you know, shown. And I tell them, do a short film. They, they don't yeah. realize, they, everybody has this thing that they have to do a documentary or they have to do a feature film and submit right. it to a film. They don't, they don't, it's like they forget that you could do a short film, you know. In two or three days and you keep shut. Look at the careers you've seen built, either through Choppers or outside of Choppers. I mean, you can make a short film in a couple of days, and if it's great, it'll go viral on the internet or go to a festival like this one or another one. And you can have a feature deal within months or weeks, you know, I mean, just by making one great short. I've seen it happen many, many times. Right. Um, I get submitted directors a lot of times, and what they submit me is, is they're great short films, and it's, it's, it's easy to see from this. On the one hand, it's much more scalable to make than a feature film. But on the other hand, the people watching it can totally see what your skills are. And and I think you can give someone great confidence in making something bigger and better. And just by making one great three minutes, four minutes, whatever it is, short film. Wow. Well, thank you. And it, it was a pleasure speaking to you. And, and, and uh, hopefully one of these days uh, we'll meet. And, uh, That'd be great. I really... I really appreciate you taking interest. Yeah, because, I can't wait to read the story. because I love Australians and I, I, I bonded with the Australian uh, because of, of Ted Koch's film, Wake and Fright, uh, right. because he told me so much about, you know, uh, you know, the whole history behind that film and how he was a uh, Canadian going maybe. to Australia. <laughs> yeah. You know? So. so, anyway. Um, sure. Yeah. And I'm definitely going to be going, and um, I'll let Emily know. You know yeah, I'll, great. Uh, well, come and say hi. I'd love to meet you. Sure. And you, you take care, and and uh, good luck, and and I wish you the best, and thank you. Thank you. I wish you the best, too, Antonio. Thanks for the call. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.